Hello there. Uh, this is Ian from NoFi, and I'm going to take you guys through a complete setup end-to-end -end of a new uh, NoFi template um, in your Notion workspace. And along the way, I'm going to share some tips and tricks and uh, customizations uh, that I have personally made um, to make the NoFi template, uh, you know, even better and um, really kind of give you the ability to make it your own. Um, and with that, uh, we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing I'm going to do here is just walk through setting up a new uh, NoFi account. So here I am on kind of the homepage login screen that you get dropped into uh, when you enter the NoFi app. I'm going to click on sign up um, and then just go ahead and enter an email for our new user here. So we're going to call him john.doe at NoFi.so. And we'll just give him some password. All right, and we're going to continue. Cool. So at this point, uh, we're into the setup flow for the uh, for NoFi here. Um, so we're going to click get started. So the first step is to actually connect uh, NoFi to your existing Notion workspace. Um, so you know, many of you, if you're like me, you probably have a personal Notion workspace that you use to you know, run your life, your second brain, whatever it is. Um, you know, for some of you, maybe it's the Notion workspace that you use for a small business or your side hustle or whatever it is. Um, NoFi will work with any of them. You just have to click connect. And I uh, just kind of make sure that our workspace up here in the top is the correct Notion workspace. Um, and then we're going to click next. And then, so this is an important section. Uh, we'll probably revisit this later or even in another video. Um, but for almost all use cases, all typical use cases, you're going to want to select use a template provided by the developer. That's going to give you the kind of default NoFi template. It'll clone it into your workspace for you and you'll be good to go. So in our case, I'm going to leave that option selected. So we're going to click allow access and then we're off to the races. So this part takes uh, a minute. Um, this unfortunately isn't something that we can improve on uh, here at NoFi. We're just waiting for Notion to kind of do all of the uh, indexing of the kind of new template after we've cloned it into your workspace. All right, so yeah, here we are. That took uh, just about a minute, um, as I mentioned earlier. At this point, uh, NoFi is integrated into our Notion workspace. So we can actually see that for ourselves. Just tab over to our actual workspace here. Again, this is the same test Notion workspace. Um, and we can see over here on the left-hand side that we have a new page, this uh, NoFi dashboard. And this is the template. Um, so you can see there's no data in here yet. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but uh, yeah, you can verify at this point that the template made its way into your workspace. and uh, you, uh, you're all, all set up. So by default, in my case, this got uh, cloned into my private pages. You can locate this template uh, wherever you please. So in our case, uh, you know, maybe we want to nest it under a new page that we call my finance uh, pages. Why not? That's an empty page. And within that empty page, let's go ahead and just drag NoFi into that. So now if we go to my finance pages, we can see our NoFi dashboard is a child of that page. Hopping back over to the NoFi app, let's go ahead and finish uh, the setup process here. So we're gonna click next. And at this point, this is where it asks us to sign up for a free trial. All right, so we went ahead and entered our payment information um, and now we are good to go. Uh, our membership has been activated and we're ready to continue on with the setup process. So finally, uh, we have uh, just some quick preferences here. There's really only one uh, for you to worry about as of the time of this video, and that is this earliest transaction date. Now, uh, thinking about what this actually means, uh, when we sync our bank accounts or financial institutions of any type, um, we're gonna have transaction data, right? And you know, by default, we can pull up to two years from our banking provider for a lot of folks, myself included, um, that is a lot of data. Um, and sifting through all that in your personal workspace uh, can make things a bit messy. So this option provides you an easy way to just say, 
you know, for instance, in our case, let's say uh, January 1st, 2023. And yeah, so we'll set that. And what that'll do for us is um, it'll make sure that when transaction data does get pulled down, that nothing before that date uh, actually ends up in our Notion workspace. So this is just kind of a, a simple uh, optimization to kind of keep things from getting cluttered with old data that you don't necessarily care about. Cool, so with that all set, let's proceed to add accounts. So finally, we're ready to actually link our bank account or other financial institution with our NoFi template and get some data in there. Um, so let's click this add account button to do that. All right, so going through the kind of plat workflow here, uh, maybe later. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for my financial institution of choice. In this case, it's uh, actually Chase. So that's quite easy. We can just uh, click that. All right, so for Chase, we're going to share all accounts, continue to log in. All right, so you'll see a couple more screens here. Chase is asking me to verify that I trust the recipient, uh, in this case, NoFi, uh, the information that we'll receive. And we want to share, in this case, I just have one credit card linked with uh, this, with Chase Bank. And we're gonna click connect my accounts to go ahead and uh, proceed. All right, time to celebrate. We are all set up. We've got our account added. We can go ahead and proceed to our NoFi dashboard. All right, so this is a bit of a different view than what we've seen before. And this is kind of what you'll be greeted with uh, when you log into the NoFi app uh, in the future, you know, after initial setup. Um, so a couple of things, there's not a whole lot here. It's pretty simple, but uh, at the top, this is where we can see the actual workspace that we currently have linked. So again, this is that test notion workspace that we chose at the very beginning of this tutorial. Um, we can click this link to go ahead and take us to that workspace. Now we can also click this trash can icon, which gives us the option to disconnect uh, that workspace and link another one. So if you, you know, have a situation where you migrate from one notion workspace to another, uh, and you want to port your NoFi account to work with the new workspace, this might be uh, something that is interesting to you. Um, now the middle section here, uh, these are our linked accounts. Um, so we can see we have one account linked right now, that is Chase. Um, and we can see the account data update is in progress. So this is the initial update. We're pulling in all of our, uh, you know, years worth of data more or less. So this is gonna take a minute. Um, the good news is, is that you can get real time updates uh, right on your dashboard here. So. If you want to check back and see when that update is completed or what the latest status of that update is, um, this is the place to do that. Um, a couple other options here. You have an option uh, to manually refresh when an update is not in progress. And you can also remove accounts if you wish to no longer pull data from those accounts. And lastly, you can actually add additional accounts here, which will take you back to the familiar uh, screen here to link another bank account. Uh, we're not going to do that for now. Uh, and lastly, um, we have a preferences section at the bottom here. This is exactly the same uh, earliest transaction date preference that we covered in the initial setup flow. And this just lets you adjust that date um, at any point in the future if you change your mind. All right, so now that we've successfully linked our account with NoFi, we've given that initial update a couple of minutes to go ahead and finish up. Uh, we've tapped back over to our Notion workspace here and we can actually see that we now have all of our data that's been populated. So uh, we can see at the top here, we've got uh, the template comes with a transactions to review section. So this is just all of your recent transactions that uh, have yet to be reviewed, which you can do by just checking this box. So you can see that once I do that, uh, that transaction uh, no longer is in this transactions to review section. What does it mean to review a transaction? Well, a couple things. It really just means that you, know, you can take a look and Pay attention specifically to the uh, category over here. It's probably the main one that you're going to want to focus on. Um, so NoFi does a pretty good job of guessing uh, an appropriate category for your transaction out of the gate. Um, so you can see over here, uh, this first transaction, 
Uh, it seems to think this is a restaurants category, which is fine. Um, let's say that we don't want this to be a restaurants category. Uh, we want it to instead be something else. We can, of course, go in here and uh, unlink this restaurants category page and then instead choose entertainment in our case. Great. So yeah, so that you can adjust categories for these transactions as you review them, uh, like so, um, and so on and so forth. Um, you can see we've got a lot of them uh, left to review here. Um, feel free to also take advantage of Notion's uh, batch select functionality. Um, with this little checkbox here. Um, this is a great way to work through a lot of uh, a lot of these transactions and review them all um, in a relatively short amount of time. I found myself using this. Uh, in my day-to-day -day, uh, transaction reviews uh, quite often, so that can be useful. So moving right along, we've got our accounts section here. Um, this is going to have um, you know, a card for each uh, account that we've linked. In this case, uh, Chase just has one uh, credit card account, so that's uh, going to be all that we see uh, show up here for now. Um, so moving down to budget categories, um, this is kind of an interesting section. So. You can see here that uh, we have, you know, for each of those categories that we saw earlier when we were reviewing uh, transactions, we actually have a, a category page that gets created for that category. Um, and this allows us to have this handy view where we actually are able to see the breakdown of how much we've uh, spent or, uh, you know, how much uh, income we've made if it's an income uh, category type. You can see here that we can set this to be income, expense, or transfer. Um, we can see the, you know, kind of total amounts uh, by month. So right now we're actually looking at uh, March 2023's data. Um, and you'll notice um, that there's actually not one for anything past March 2023. Um, so I'll actually show you uh, in the next video uh, how to add additional uh, database views for this budget categories uh, database, which is going to be absolutely critical to uh, keeping tabs on your monthly expenses uh, month to month. So for now, all you need to worry about with these budget categories is that they correspond to the category that you're selecting uh, when you review a transaction. And finally, uh, the monthly summaries uh, section here. Um, so this is going to just give you kind of a high level overview, a high level breakdown uh, month by month of your total expenses, uh, your total income, and finally, balance just the difference between the two. Um, so you can see here that we have uh, monthly summaries for you know all of the months. It is currently September as of the time of this video. So we have all of the months of 2023 so far, all the way back to January. And if you'll remember from earlier in the video, we set that earliest transaction date to January 1st, 2023. So it makes sense that we don't have any monthly summaries before that earliest date. Um, so yeah, these are the primary sections of the default uh, NoFi template. Now, we'll get into in the next video all the different ways in which you can kind of tweak what's already here to make it even better. You know, just some ideas to uh, you know get you thinking about ways that you can really uh, customize this template further and really make it your own. So yeah, hopefully uh, you guys have found this uh, helpful and um, are able to use this to get set up and running easily. Thanks for watching. And I will see you guys uh, soon with a part two uh, for more customizations uh, for this template.